A word of warning. This episode deals with issues of mental health and chronic illness, which some listeners may find triggering. Listener discretion is advised. This podcast deals with issues about LGBT families and trans-specific topics. We would love to hear from you and welcome your questions and comments. However, we will not tolerate any discriminatory language or hate speech. So please, just don't do it. Enjoy the show! When you're dealing with a chronic illness, self-care is paramount. You, you have to do it. And look, people, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> because I'm really terrible at self-care. I'm really terrible at putting my foot down and saying, I can't do this or I need this. Really, really not a good advocate for myself. But... It is so, so, so important. Whatever kind of chronic illness or problem you're, you're dealing with, you know, self-care is important. And this goes for, for mental health issues, too. When we were kids, we met at camp. After college, we got married. Ten years later, we finally had a baby. That same year, I came out as trans. This is the story of our journey. Through marriage. Parenting. Gender. And all the changes that life brings. This is Our Our Life Life in in Transition. Transition. I was just leaning in so that I could talk. I know. I was waiting to see if you would start first or I was waiting you out. Hey, everybody. Hello. Thanks for tuning in. (laughs) This is episode four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Episode four. Yep. Our podcast has survived till four episodes. Four. Yeah. Um, This is this is this is fun. I'm glad that we haven't floundered and (laughs) just blew up. Um, I think we're on a roll. It's possible it'll still blow up. So anyway. Well, I appreciate your confidence. I'm Rachel. And I'm Shannon. And this is our life in transition. <laughs> in case you stumbled on here by accident. I mean, it's possible. I don't know how they wound up getting here through the podcast app that they were listening to and clicking on the app. I mean, if you got here by accident, you really messed up. Or you don't know what you're doing. Either way, we're happy you're here. That's true. I'm very happy that you're here. So today's episode is about self-care. Um, it's something that a lo- not a lot of people talk about. Um, sometimes it's a, a difficult topic to discuss. Uh, sometimes it's wrapped up in all kinds of feelings and stuff. But we're going to talk about it because it's important. Yeah, it's something that um, a lot of people... Um don't necessarily focus on and a lot of people don't make time for their own self-care um, and a lot of people are very judgy um, when other people try to take care of themselves. Judgy make judgments. <laughs> so anyway that's today's topic. So um, you know we've been trying to focus on um, on some self-care. I know especially you've you've been trying to, to take care of, of, of yourself um, it's not always easy. It's not working. <laughs> um, so, I mean, first of all, um, I mean, you know, why is it really important to, to focus on, on your own self-care? I mean... Because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of everybody else. And honestly, that's what happens to me. You know, I'm always t- saying, too, that... Um, hello, dog. Um, <laughs> I'm not always saying hello, dog, but um, she's here again because we're doing a podcast, so clearly she has to be involved. Um, I'm always saying to you as well because um, I, I love you, but you're, you're not great at, you know, putting yourself 
first sometimes you're very you're very giving it is also true that other people are not good at putting me first there's that um but you do have you know you you said that that last episode too you kind of have a mom personality um even before you were a mom you always (laughs) were taking care of everybody else yes and people have gotten used to it so i can't stop now (laughs) but um and I, i always kind of like have said to you that in order to take care of other people you do have to take care of yourself first and it's kind of like um when you're on an airplane um before they uh take off the the in-flight instructions always say that in case of an emergency put your own oxygen mask on before you try to help anybody else um because if you pass out you can't help the person next to you i'd totally be dead (laughs) so anyway the point is If you have nothing left to give, you can't give to anybody else. So you got to recharge yourself. And it's also important, you know, when dealing with stress and things like that, that you have time to, you know, take time for you and de-stress and that kind of stuff. I know especially you have a lot of trouble dealing with stress um, and I mean, everybody does, but um, if you are not doing what you need to do in order to kind of brush some stuff off and get things out of your system and off of your plate, um, it's very easy to become overwhelmed. Um, and you know, you've been there before. I've definitely been there before um, in many different occasions. Um, and it's very easy to, to get overwhelmed. And I know personally, I... If it gets too much for me, I just shut down. This is true. And also, it's important in your relationships to take time for self-care. Because, you know, if you're stressed out and you're, you know, freaking out all the time, then you can't be a good partner. You can't be a good parent. You can't be the best parent that you can be. You can't be the best partner that you can be if you're not taking care of you too because like me when I get stressed out I get super overwhelmed sometimes I tend to lash out or like Shannon she shuts down and not helpful from a partnership perspective or from a co-parenting perspective right um it's very easy to when you are overwhelmed like that um, and you haven't done what you need to do in order to de-stress and um, manage your own emotional well-being um, and physical well-being as well um, to then when your partner or your kids aggravate you in kind of like a mild way it's very easy to like start getting spiky get angry um, not be able to deal with normal everyday things that are stressful because you've got so much other things on your plate um and i know that whenever i am overwhelmed like i I, i'm i I can be a little bit of a bitch sometimes (laughs) um if this is recorded for posterity people i want you to know even if she deletes this i'm keeping a copy (laughs) um but it's, it's very easy to um, get angry and start blaming other people for everything that's going on in your life because you're, um, you're overwhelmed and overwrought. And it's very understandable when that does happen because, you know, a person can only take so much. But that's why it's important to have some kind of release, some kind of something that is for you that keeps you going. Um, and... I know in your case as well, um, it's complicated by having some physical problems in addition to just dealing with, you know, stressful um, things that you have going on as well. Yes. (laughs) No. um, So I have been diagnosed um, relatively recently uh, with something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and it's basically a... Uh, a genetic I don't want to call it a defect 
I guess it's condition. a defect. But it's a genetic condition that um, makes... <laughs> well, okay, this is going to sound like it's not a big deal. It gives me hypermobility, which I guess in essence means I'm very bendy. You're Elastigirl. But the problem is that when you're very bendy in ways that you shouldn't be able to bend, your joints start breaking down. And that's not good. So I have um, some collagen deficiencies. Um, I have some pretty serious uh, early onset arthritis uh, that I deal with. It's really a crapshoot which joint is going to act up when, but there's really not a day that I'm not in pain at some point in some place in my body. And the joy of it all is there's not a whole lot to be done about it. Um, there's braces that you can get. There's physical therapy for you to do, but... Arthritis is arthritis. So aside from, you know, anti-inflammatories and stuff like that, I'm stuck with it. And um, it causes a fair amount of limitation. I mean, I wanted to go to Pride with Shannon when she went to Philly. I didn't want to go to New York. New York was crazy. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. Um, Self-care. You decided not to <laughs> go in the crowds. That's probably wise. Right. But I wanted to go to Philly, but it just wasn't feasible for me because I had already done other stuff that weekend and I knew that my, as much as my brain wanted to go, my body was not going to handle all of the walking. I think you walked like, what, four miles more than that? I mean, at least. I... I, I... I, I calculated it <laughs> right afterwards, but it was a lot. I was all over the place in uh, Center City. Yeah, so there was no way that I would have been able to do that. And if I had done that, there was no way I would have been able to go to work the next day. Like, it just was not going to happen. So, which is frustrating because, like, you can't do everything that you want to do. And you have to pick and choose what you can and can't do. And then it also leads to feeling guilty about not being able to do stuff um, or choosing not to do stuff because you you know the consequences of pushing yourself too far. Other people don't always realize that there are consequences. The thing about EDS, it's kind of similar to, you know, fibro and other invisible diseases you know, if I had a cast on, nobody would expect me to walk around Philly. But you can't really tell that I have a limitation, that I have this terrible arthritis and this terrible pain because I don't have, you know, a physical sign of it. So then it's hard to make people understand sometimes why you're not doing something that they feel like you should be able to do. And there's guilt that goes along with that. You know, I feel bad when I can't go out and walk around and spend time with my family in that way. You know, when I can't run around with our daughter, when I can't go to certain places or stuff like that because I'm just, I've reached my limit for the week. And I think the guilt of having to deal with a chronic illness and having to take care of yourself with a chronic illness um, is the same kind of guilt that you get when you are dealing with any kind of self-care. At least I do. I have been highly trained in guilt. And uh, so I feel guilty whenever I don't do something that I think that somebody's expecting me to do. Um, well, and to My guilt game is, is high. This is true. I mean, in, in addition to that, you also, um, you have guilt over the prospect of actually trying to explain it to people as well. Um, I mean, in a, besides just feeling guilty about the situation in and of itself, you don't, you're constantly saying, I don't want to burden people by complaining. 
Um, but you have a valid reason that, you know, hey, I can't do this. I'm in pain. Um, but you always feel bad saying that, um, even just around the house, if like you like need to sit down and I'm doing house housework or something like that, you say to me all the time that I'm sorry, I feel bad. I don't want to complain. I should go and do stuff. And I'm, you know, sometimes I have to force you to sit down because you feel guilty about it. Thank you for chiming back in. I was kind of on a monologue there for a little while. That's okay. I did that the past couple <laughs> podcasts, so it's your turn. Well, yeah. I mean, I do I do feel guilty. I feel like because I'm a very empathic person, when somebody is expressing not feeling good or something around me, I tend to pick up that energy. And so I'm hyper aware of trying not to put that energy out on anybody else because how I receive that from other people can be very burdensome. And I have been struggling since my diagnosis with uh, the prospect of being a burden, which is very, very frightening to me. But perhaps that's for another podcast. But the point is... When you're dealing with a chronic illness, self-care is paramount. You, You have to do it. And look, people, do as I say, not as I do. Because I'm really terrible at self-care. I'm really terrible at putting my foot down and saying, I can't do this or I need this. Really, really not a good advocate for myself. But... It is so, so, so important. Whatever kind of chronic illness or problem you're, you're dealing with, you know, self-care is important. And this goes for, for mental health issues, too. Thanks again for listening to the show. If you like what you hear so far, subscribe so you never miss an episode. Also, be sure to share with your friends and family so they can enjoy as well. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Shannon. You like reading, right? You like books? You're like a book type person? I have a library degree. I, I, I like books. I mean, it'd be really awkward if you didn't. Yes. Okay. Yes, it would. So, well, you know, you're, you're in luck. I am. <laughs> yes, indeed you are. You know why? Why, Shannon? Why? Because her friend has a new book out. I already knew that. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's right. But Distant Lands of Sand and the Men Who Died There is an all-new novel by A.E. Fletcher. Yay! What is it about? Well, Ridley lives a life others only dream of. Lazy cafe days and nights of hash and passionate lovemaking. Ooh. As a vagabond expatriate in the Medina of Tangiers, Morocco. That sounds exciting. And exotic. Indeed. But when he becomes wrapped up in an adventure and vendetta that's been brewing since World War II, he won't survive without the help of a beautiful and deadly photojournalist and a crack pilot. Like a pilot that's on crack? Or like a really good pilot? I think the latter. Okay. But I haven't gotten to that part of the book yet. Together, they must outrun an army of mercenaries to find the mythical lost city of Zerzura. That does sound exotic. Distant lands of sand and the men who died there is Indiana Jones meets Anthony Bourdain, a pulp novel tale of adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, and delicious food. Ooh, delicious food. I would read it just for the food. Exactly. Distant Lands of San and the Men Who Died There is now available to order on Amazon.com. So get your copy now. Absolutely. Going along with the physical, um, issues that you have it's I mean you you have some some issues dealing with um dealing with anxiety um hence the reason I didn't go to New York Pride because <laughs> oh my god oh my god yeah you, you probably would have just curled up in a ball in the middle of the street and just... I would have sat down on the sidewalk never to get up again <laughs> just just curled up in the fetal position what is this mass we're all tripping over and it's, it's just Rachel um and then I would have gotten trampled because it was madness. <laughs> it, it was insane. Um, but you deal with anxiety to begin with. So couple that with 
having a physical limitation and then the guilt that you have associated with that, that makes you more anxious. I'm a ball of nerves most of the time. <laughs> I mean, at least you don't sit and shake like a chihuahua, but um, it, it, it kind of feeds on itself. And, and then also when you get anxious, then that manifests in you being physically tense and that just aggravates the physical limitations you already have, which is just Vicious fun. Vicious cycle. Yeah. You just cannot escape. Or you get something like a migraine or something like that because you're dealing with all of the other stuff and then everything just spirals out of control. It's just awful. This is why self-care is important. And, you know, I mean, similarly, um, and in no way the same fashion, um, I've dealt with my own um, mental health issues. Um, what? Similarly, yet not the same at all. <laughs> well, no. Um, I mean... Not to compare, you know, what you have going on with what I have going on, um, but... That's right. Yours is not a disability. I, I don't know. I felt pretty... <laughs> I felt pretty... Um, I don't know, it felt pretty debilitating. Um, but my dysphoria um, is something that causes enormous amounts of anxiety and stress. Depression. And depression. Um, and it took a long time to come to terms with that and quite honestly and I, I say this to whenever I'm talking to anybody about it I had an idea of what was going on with myself well over a decade ago um, but you know a not back then it seemed like culturally it was something that just seemed completely impossible but the prospect in and of itself um, I felt guilty about I mean how could I you know as we've discussed how could I do that to you um, how could I just blow up my yeah, life? Yeah, Shannon, how could you? <laughs> yeah, I'm a monster. Um, but it took me a long time to get to a point of being able to take care of myself and my own mental health um, because I was, I felt guilty. Um, and again, it's something that nobody could see was going on. Um, when I came out, it was kind of a surprise to a lot of people because I seemed so happy, but that was the face that I put on. Um, whenever I was out in public, but you know, at home, a lot of the time I was just kind of just sitting, staring at the wall because I was just utterly sad. And it's something that was extremely hard to um, to describe to people. And it, thank God I finally. And again, I'm not always the best person to self advocate. I think that I am usually, but sometimes I'm not. Um, and it got to the point you were just like, take your ass to therapy and go talk to somebody. You're depressed. Right? Because I can't deal with this shit anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got enough going on. Right. Um, so I couldn't, you know, help you with what your needs were. I couldn't be a good partner to you because I was shutting down because I was depressed and feeling like I, everything about my life was wrong because nothing, nothing lined up. Um, and so very quickly after going into therapy, um, I was able to, you know, really come to terms with what was going on. Um, and be honest about it and work through the guilt that was keeping me from from taking care of myself. And just like physical disabilities, uh, mental health issues are uh, just as important to deal with and to take care of and to acknowledge. And just like some chronic illnesses, completely invisible. Nobody else knows what is happening in your head so which makes it even more important for you to advocate for yourself but at the same time when you're dealing with a mental health issue advocating for yourself can be very difficult it can be a huge hurdle and so hopefully if you're dealing with something like that you have a partner who is at least a little bit in tune with you and can tell you to sit your ass down when you need to and stuff like that i mean it's important to have to build a support system around yourself um, because when you've got something going on physically, mentally, um, emotionally, it's it's very hard a lot of the time to go go it alone. Um, so it's important as well. An uh, important self care step is to make sure that you build that support system so that you have people to to help you along the way. But, you know, like we said, it's difficult to just deal with everyday things if you aren't dealing with the larger um, issues that are keeping you from functioning properly. 
And even if you don't have a, you know, chronic physical or mental health issue, I mean, everybody's got stress. You know, work sucks. You don't have enough money for what you want to do. Your kid's a nut. <laughs> like, all of these things, you know, sometimes your partner's a jerk. You know, not, I'm not saying Shannon's a jerk. I'm just saying sometimes... You know, in every relationship, there are things that stress you out about another person. But so even if you're not dealing with one of these big, huge, scary things that we've been talking about, every person needs to be focused on self-care because everybody's got those little things, the little worries, the little um, just crap that stresses you out. You can't help it. You can't avoid it. Everybody has some sort of everyday issue. It doesn't matter what it is. You have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. And that can be very hard. Um, it's when I was a kid, you know, I mean, I've got some physical issues. I've got asthma, things like that. Um, and I was kind of in and out of the hospital a lot when I was a child. Um, and I know my mom was like my advocate medically. Um, and she always kind of ingrained that in me that you need to make sure that you advocate for yourself. Um, because it's difficult to get other people to worry about you because they're worrying about their own stuff. Until much later in life, she was also a terrible advocate for herself. This is true. That's absolutely true. Um, and then when she tried to you know, take care of herself, again, same as you said with you, people got used to her um, taking care of them. And, you know, when she said, I need to stop and take care of myself, you know, it was kind of confusing to people because mm, this isn't what you do. Um, but, you know, and as far as both of our issues, um, well, not both of ours, our multitude of issues, um, you know. There are so many issues. <laughs> we have so many issues. <laughs> Thank you. That was appreciated. Yeah. That's, that's blow my eardrums out, Doc. Um, but before you were diagnosed with your EDS, it took years and years before you were finally able to find somebody that diagnosed you properly. Um, and you had a lot of doctors who were just like, ah, no, it's nothing's wrong. It, you know, and just acted like it was in your head and you were just in pain for as long as I've known you. And we've been together for 20 years um, this year. So, I mean, literally like around this month, this, you know, a, a week or so is when we met. Um, and we've been together that long and the entire time that I've known you, you've had some physical issues. You've been in pain and it literally wasn't until a couple months ago that finally you got a diagnosis, um, as to what in the hell was going on because doctors kept just kind of brushing it off because I'm a woman. Well, I mean, yeah, that doesn't help. Either. <laughs> um, so you, you have to, um, be stubborn. You have to put your foot down and say, this is what I need. Um, and that's not always easy to do. People are going to give you pushback, but you have to f be focused in and, and organized in what your needs are um, so that you can take care of yourself and take care of other people. Um, and that encompasses a bunch of different things. Um, you know, just whether it's just, you know, finding something to decompress, um, some kind of stress management, any, any number of things. Meditating, yoga. Um, tai Chi is nice. I started some Tai Chi. It's, it's relaxing. It helps. She started it and then she stopped again. Don't believe her. I didn't say I, I was continuing. I said I started. I started a lot of things and then don't finish. She's a cereal starter. No, I always finish cereal. Cereal is delicious. Anyway, sometimes it's just finding relaxing things like a hobby. Um, to help decompress, um, finding time to go um, socialize. Um, it's important to have friends around you. Unless you have social anxiety, and then that's the last thing that you want to do. <laughs> well, I mean, you can come home and socialize with, you know, who you want to socialize with that's not going to stress you out. My pillow. I mean, you do have a very cushy pillow. I'm jealous. Don't steal my pillow. <laughs> I know where you sleep. Yeah, well, I mean, the baby will probably just try to steal your pillow first because you know that's okay she's too i enjoy the double standards but she doesn't understand property 
<laughs> uh, that is absolutely true, which is why she's always trying to steal our food. Um, but, I mean, sometimes, hell, sometimes you just need five minutes to sit in your car and be quiet after work. Whatever it is that you need to do to relax yourself, to manage your stress, um, to manage whatever physical issues you have going on. Um, you were just mentioning that I'm doing keto. I mean, part of that is that I need to lose weight um, for a, a surgery that I'm going to be having coming up. But um, I've been out of shape for some time. And that's, you know, something that I tried to focus on before and that kind of fell off the wagon. And it's important whether you have a chronic condition like you do um, or not, you need to take care of yourself mentally and physically um, in whatever way is best for you so that you can be you know, the best, most productive person that you can be. I love how we spent 20 minutes of this talking about everything that is wrong in our lives and why we need to do self-care and five minutes discussing what we actually do for self-care. I'll tell you what Shannon does for self-care. She watches YouTube. Or Netflix. She's a binge watcher. To be fair, I am also a YouTuber. It's, 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 I'm studying. It's research. No. <laughs> no. No, this is what, what happens when Shannon needs me time. Is she spends a whole day binge watching a season of television or something like that. It makes me good at Jeopardy. Okay. <laughs> the bottom line is this. Do whatever you need to do mm -hmm. to manage whatever issues you need to manage. And don't let anyone tell you what you should be doing for your self-care. Because Shannon needs... To unplug, to... Check out. To check out. Yeah, unplug is not the proper term <laughs> for the amount of electronics you use. <laughs> um, Shannon needs to check out and just binge watch what I consider mindless television or YouTube. But that's okay because that's what she needs. For me, you know, I find it very relaxing. I am a... Um, genealogy hobbyist um you should be a professional you're very good at it yeah well money classes all that good oh, stress that. anyway <laughs> um but so i find it very relaxing to work on family tree stuff and and research and things like that that's a good way for me to be able to turn off other things because i have a different focus um I don't get enough time to do that because I have a crazy child. Um, and we also decided that we should do uh, put out a podcast um, every other week. So, <laughs> And meanwhile, somebody's doing a weekly video. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that. And work. Yeah. You know, because we need lights and Food. electricity and, you yeah. know, a roof. <laughs> Capitalism strikes again. You know... Things would be perfect if we had an if everybody had an income, just a base income. See, now this podcast is turning socialist. See what happened. <laughs> Trump's going to come shut us down. But everybody would be able to do self care, and that would help people's mental and physical health. And then there'd be less sick people in general, a healthier population. And a happier population is a more productive population. I'm just saying, you know, is viva it, la revolution. Is it Finland that's the happiest country? And one of those Scandinavian places. Maybe we should move there. It's cold, though. I hate snow. Okay. I mean, well, but in a couple years, you yeah. know, global warming will take care of that. And then, yeah, Finland, here we go. <laughs> anyway, I don't really know how to wrap this up. I think we just stopped talking. We're, I'm, you know, I'm just not self care. I'm not going to stress about how to finish the podcast. We should just walk away. That's not self care. That's called being lazy. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, okay. So, whatever you need to do to take care of yourself, do that. Um, and don't let anybody tell you that you're being selfish um, for doing what you need to do to be a healthier person. Right. And you know what else? I wanted to put this little thing in here. <clears throat> 
And another thing. And another thing. You know what's good self-care? And I know I just told you not to let anybody tell you what good self-care is. I'm going to tell you anyway. If you're in or around the Philadelphia area, go to the Trans Wellness Conference. That's true. No, it really is good. It's, it's good and it's good to be around good people. And there's a lot of information about self-care and things like that there. And you might see us wandering around. That's true. Yeah, this is probably, this is going to be the last podcast before the conference. So yeah. So I mean, if you guys are going to the Trans Wellness Conference um, at the end of July, look for us. We'll be around. Um, but You won't know how to find us because we're just voices to you. Well, we do have a website. Go to the website and look at our pictures. Oh, yeah. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> Google us. You'll find it. But um, this isn't even an ad. I mean, we should we should, we should, should call the Mazzoni Center and tell, tell them that they should sponsor our podcast because, you know, we're giving them free advertisement. It's a free freaking conference. I mean, we should give them free advertising. They don't charge you anything to go. That's fair enough. Fine. Anyway, people, relax. Take care of yourself. Don't let anybody tell you not to mm-hmm. because you can't take care of other people unless you take care of you. Put your own oxygen mask on, people. Exactly. And thank you for listening. I hope that this podcast has been part of your self-care. Yes. That was creepy. <laughs> Don't do that. It's called ASMR, Rachel. It's creepy. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> okay. And this is why I'm stressed out. <laughs> that was good self-care making me stop. Good job. Okay. Well, I am Rachel. And I'm Shannon. Thank you for listening. And, uh, oh, again, we won't see you next time, but I um, hope that you join us next time. And we'll see you at the Trans Wellness Conference. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. Thank you again for listening to Our Life in Transition. This show is hosted by Rachel and Shannon McDill. Our producer and editor is Shannon McDill. Theme music is Seize the Day by Jens Kilsoft. Check him out at jens.kilsoft.net. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash olitpod. That's forward slash O-L-I-T-P-O-D. Your support makes this show possible. Thank you.